So today's question is when guilt and shame seem to attack, seem to land upon you, how do you have the presence of mind not to react and defend? That's the question. So basically when you experience yourself as being under attack, how do you not defend? Well, what we're talking about here are involuntary reactions and they're not a reaction to something outside of you they're a reaction to a perception that you have created so first you make a judgment a decision on your own with the ego not with the spirit that is how you've seen the world. You've looked at the world and you've decided it's a certain way. That's the perceptual interpretation. And then you decide how the character that you consider yourself to be should react um, to, to that slight or that scenario or that set of circumstances. And so you go from being the dreamer of the dream and the one aware and watching that they are projecting in the entire world, all of the characters, even the seeming character that you think yourself to be, and you are now slap bang on the screen, thinking that you're a particular character and responding from that state of mind, from that personalized persona mask state of mind. So really, how, the question is how, and the answer to any how question is the Holy Spirit. And really, it's a development of trust with the Holy Spirit that you want to orientate yourself daily to not responding to what you see coming from outside. Instead, witnessing to how you feel inside, no matter what seems to be occurring outside. And denying every time you experience anything that you would have heretofore seen as a response, that it is caused by something outside of you and taking total responsibility for how you feel and the perception that it's not being caused by the external world. Again, I hear you go, yeah, but how, Sarah, how do you do that? Well, it's the development of trust. And I feel that it's the development of trust in coming into holding the Holy Spirit's hand so closely that nothing can wedge in between that state of presence and that security that you all feel to get this togetherness that, that you're experiencing as if there's two, as if there's you and the spirit. In truth, this is an experience of your higher self and eventually there's an experience of what appears to be a merge between the two. And there's a sense of integrated security and safety and trust and that everything is okay. In the meantime, we're given the device of the Holy Spirit, the answer, the voice for God, to come into that state of trust that we are not abandoned a person in a world and a victim. So I would say that it's in the how, in this case, is in courting that relationship. Yeah, really embracing that relationship during what seems to be calm moments, non-turbulent moments, taking a couple of minutes to sit with the spirit, share how you're feeling, look at the day, look at what's unfolding. Again, chapter 30, Rules for decision, first thing in the morning, orientating yourself to spending the day with the spirit. You become so used to being in the, that presence that it won't even occur to you to need to defend. And when you watch that defensiveness flare up, you it will me immediately sign an alert within you that says, pray, pray now. It won't say, defend, defend now. It will say, oh, I feel scared. You know, join with the spirit, show the spirit, spirit, look at this. I feel afraid. So really, we want to come into a state of mind that says, I don't know. Because the minute you think you know what's going on and you think you know how it should be handled and you have opinions on it, it's nearly impossible to follow guidance. You've become something other than what you are and you are now going to fight to prove that you are right. You're inherently going to be wrong because you're speaking from the point of view of a person in a world. So it, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are saying. It doesn't matter who looks innocent and guilty. It's irrelevant. In, in this case, you're mistaken in who you are and it's an identity crisis yet again. So the invitation, the how of when something 
seems to occur to you from the external world, how do you have the presence of mind to pause and not defend when that occurs? And the answer is in the question, how do you have the presence of mind? You cultivate it. You learn to spend time with your best friend. You crave to spend time with your best friend. And you allow that relationship to deepen and develop. And the development of trust can be a very playful and joyful thing. And I have a link in the description to one of the many speakers I have on that development of trust and the many parables from my own life on how I developed that trust with the spirit. You know, you have to be a happy learner. It can't be, I want to do this because that's good. That won't work. You got to see that this is your best friend. This is your best friend with only your best interests at heart. And here's the caveat, the best interests of everyone else as well. There's no one can legislate for that kind of support. There's no one can legislate for that kind of innocence. Think about it. If it's best for you and for everyone concerned, where's the guilt? And so you become used to becoming undefended because you're not the one making the decisions. You're not experiencing yourself as anything, only the one following. And so where, where is the harm in that? Where you're harmless because you've chosen to follow the path and the vision of one who knows what's best for all. It's also helpful to remember that everything is the past and everything has worked out well. And if I defend myself, I am attacked. It's simultaneous. It's a decision, simultaneous. And yet, there's nothing wrong. If you find that's happened to you and you're like, oh, I feel attacked, then outing that I feel attacked is the most honest thing you can do in the moment because it's consistent. You just say, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. And it's total responsibility just in stating that because there's no blame, there's no causation involved. You just say, I feel this. And here's the other thing. You'll instantly feel more in control because you're now in control of conflict resolution, which is something that we've been craving to do through form. And yet this is the only way. I'm in control of the conflict resolution by knowing what I'm in control of. And if you're not sure what you're in control of, you should read the serenity prayer again. And David's talk on the serenity prayer being just like A Course in Miracles. You know, the wisdom to know the difference. And that's what this is. You are responsible for how you feel. You are responsible for your state of mind. You are responsible for what you see. You are not responsible for the error. You are merely responsible for the correction. So you can just go, oh, I feel defended. I feel defended. I don't like that. I feel defended. I feel defended. Which is exactly the same as saying, I feel attacked. I feel attacked. And th there's no blame going outward and there's no blame going inward with that. It it's the original surrender position. I feel... I feel attacked. I feel attacked. I feel defended. I feel defended. And it, it's, it's asking. It's like asking for a pause. And, and then you'll be freed up to do that. And also, you're worthy of that pause. There's nothing so urgent that there isn't time to take that pause. And when you believe there is, that'll be a trick. And that will be one of the considerations that you'll have to look at and pray over and those beliefs and desires in your own mind that are reinforcing your self-concept that you'll have to address with the spirit over time. But don't worry, you'll be given many, many opportunities and many busy doings to go on <laughs> through which you'll have adventures and happy learnings with the Holy Spirit. So cultivate the relationship with that presence of mind. That's how you have the presence of mind when you suddenly feel under attack.